Hello everybody! My name is Carly and I work in the education department here at Meyer Gardens and as you can see we are here in the beautiful tropical conservatory where all the butterflies are flying around. It's so calming and peaceful and um, if you remember from yesterday we started to talk about the life cycle of a butterfly and we talked about um, the first two stages. So remember we said that that the name for that complete change that a butterfly goes through is called metamorphosis. And we talked about the egg stage and how a caterpillar hatches from an egg. And then we got to change our puppet friend, our monarch caterpillar, into a chrysalis. So a caterpillar is going to metamorph into a chrysalis. And for the monarch caterpillar, what happens is, remember when we talked about how the caterpillar grows and grows and grows, and on that fifth time that it's going to shed its exoskeleton, it's actually changing into a chrysalis. So the caterpillar is going to go find a spot, a quiet spot that it feels safe in, and what it's going to do is it's going to hang upside down in this form that kind of looks like the letter J. So right here it's reversed, but it'll hang in what we call a J formation. And that's when the last, um, when it starts to molt for the last time. As you can see in this picture, the skin, that exoskeleton is starting to shed. But this time, instead of it growing a new exoskeleton, it's actually turning into a chrysalis. So this process happens really quickly. Um, in fact, a lot of our docents here, when we do have butterflies in the seasonal garden, will keep a really close eye on a caterpillar in a J formation to try and catch that from happening, or try and um, see that happening. So once it turns into a chrysalis, um, remember how we talked about how not all butterflies look the same, and also not all butterfly eggs look the same? Kind of makes sense that the caterpillars are going to look different, and so are the chrysalis. So over here, we have our observation station. And all of the, this is where all of the different butterflies that you see flying around the conservatory, this is where they emerge. So if you take a look, all of the different chrysalis look very different too. I really love taking, coming up here and taking a look at these because it's so fascinating, the different textures and colors and patterns that are on these chrysalis. And it makes me think about how butterflies live all over the world. And different places in the world look very different. So I'm wondering why these chrysalis look so different. Let's take a look at some of these. So we have our chrysalis friend here and we were thinking about why those chrysalis look different and we talked about how um, butterflies are located all over the world and so I want you to think about why this might be a dangerous time in the life cycle of a butterfly why would it being inside a chrysalis be a dangerous time hmm, I'm looking at this chrysalis do you see any legs on this chrysalis no, I don't see any legs. Do you see any wings on this chrysalis? No, don't see any wings. Thinking back to when I was imagining if I were a hungry bird and I spotted this chrysalis, it might look pretty tasty. And if I was that bird and decided that I wanted to eat this chrysalis, could this chrysalis get away? No, it can't. So its only defense is to blend in with its environment. Its only defense is camouflage. And because butterflies live all, all over the world and different places look different, those chrysalis need to blend into whatever environment they're in. So I have a challenge for you. Would you like to play a game with me? Can you find the chrysalis? So let's take a look here at my first example. Can you find the chrysalis? Hmm, look really hard. Did you spot it? Okay, I'm gonna point it out. It's right here. Nice work. Are you ready for another one? 
All right, can you find the chrysalis in this one? This one blends in even better. Okay, did you find it? I'm gonna point it out. It's right here. And if you look really close, you can see these two, they almost look like strings attached. So I think that's to support the chrysalis, but I like in this one how even the texture matches the texture of the stem that this chrysalis is on. Are you ready for another one? Look really closely. Okay, this one may have tricked you. It's right here. It kind of looks like a leaf changing color in the fall because it's starting to get pink here. I think it's really fascinating that a chrysalis can even mimic the changes of the season. Let's try another one. Okay, in my opinion, this is the trickiest one yet. So let's see if you can find this one. I'm gonna give you an extra second or two. Okay, I'm gonna point it out. This one's smaller, but it's right here. Again, the colors and the textures match the bark of the tree that that chrysalis is on. Pretty cool. Okay, I've got two more for you. Can you find the chrysalis in this picture? Okay, I'm gonna point it out for you. It's right here. It looks like a dead leaf. Okay, last one. All right, this is the last one. Let's see if you can find it. Did you find it? Let's check. It's right here. Wow, again, the same patterns, textures, and shape even of the stem that that chrysalis is on. Okay. So we looked at some different chrysalis and hopefully that chrysalis was able to stay camouflaged because it takes 10 to 14 days for a butterfly to turn into a butterfly inside the chrysalis. So after those 10 to 14 days, the butterfly is gonna be ready to emerge. Do you think I can get my chrysalis to turn into a butterfly? Let's see. Wow, what a change. That's a complete metamorphosis. Wow, okay, I'm gonna put my butterfly down for a minute, but we'll come back to the butterfly because I wanna tell you about some of its anatomy. But let's talk about how it comes out of the chrysalis. So when the butterfly is ready to emerge, you can see the chrysalis splits open and the butterfly's head's gonna be pointed down at the bottom of the chrysalis and it's going to start to emerge. So you can see its head's here, its legs are here, it's starting to crawl out of the bottom. And then it's gonna hang on to the chrysalis because you can see here, the abdomen of this uh, butterfly is very swollen. And that's because it has a lot of fluid in the abdomen that it actually needs to pump into its wings that's how the wings get to expand, is that fluid is gonna pump in and then the butterfly's wings can expand so it can use them. So the butterfly, when it comes out of the chrysalis, if you look at our observation station, you notice that some of them look, the wings look very wet. And they are wet, but then once they stretch out, they're able to um, use the wings. So it's not necessarily drying out, it's just taking time to pump that fluid into its wings. So then once the butterfly has all the fluid pumped into its wings, it's ready to fly. So let's take a look at um, our butterfly here and its parts now that it's changed from a caterpillar to a chrysalis and now to a butterfly. So a butterfly has four wings. It has two fore wings, which are the top, and then two hind wings, which are on the bottom. And it has two antennae six legs and eyes 
And then this special curly thing is called a proboscis. Does anybody know what a butterfly eats? It actually eats nectar that can be found on the inside of flowers. Sometimes it'll also eat uh, the juices from rotting fruit, which is why if you come to Meyer Gardens, you see the, the trays of rotting fruit out. Those are for the butterflies. So this proboscis acts kind of like a straw and the butterfly will unfurl this proboscis and stick it to the inside of the flower so it can suck out that nectar. So it uses its proboscis to eat and it uses its antennae for two senses. It uses its eyes to see. It uses its antennae to smell. So it's gonna sniff for flowers. And it also uses its antennae to hear things. So two senses for those. And then it uses its feet for another sense. So we talked about sight with its eyes, hearing with its antenna, smell with its antenna. So we have touch and taste left. What do you think a butterfly uses its feet for? Did you guess touch? You would think touch, but it's actually taste. A butterfly tastes with its feet. So when it's landing on things, it's tasting them to see if it's something that is good to eat. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us in Meyer Gardens today. I hope you learned something new about butterflies and um, we'll see you later.